Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're going to look at building a bridge. But not just any bridge, we're going to build an email bridge. So right here, I have a vintage PC, which will soon be running Netscape Communicator 4.08, which has an email client. However, modern email services tend to use secure certificates. So, what can we do so that we can read those emails and access them on, say, a local network with being as secure as possible, yet still being able to use modern email systems? Well, today, that's what we're going to explore. And while I sit here and get this machine all set up, I'm going to toss it over to Virtual Chris, and he's going to teach you exactly what needs to happen so that you too can build an email bridge. Configuring email for incoming and outgoing messages for legacy email clients. Let's get started. So first of all, as always, this procedure is available in my Git repository. You can see it here, and I will put a link to it in the description below. Getting started with preconditions. So, for this procedure, there's one precondition, and it's not a light precondition, but it is a precondition for which I have provided instructions. And that is setting up a Raspberry Pi and enabling SSH. So, if you follow this link, it will also take you to my Git repository, where there are setup instructions that you can follow to configure your Raspberry Pi. And we're going to call our Raspberry Pi ChatPy. That will be the name of it. Configuring incoming email. So, first, a couple of notes. We're going to configure email with a default Raspberry Pi username of Pi. Now, that's not really that big of a deal when it comes to usernames. That doesn't matter with respect to, say, the email address, but that's just what we've chosen. And if you wanted to go with something else, you're certainly welcome to. We'll also be configuring a Gmail account. Now, this procedure assumes that two-factor authentication is not set up on your Gmail account. And also that you have enabled support for less secure applications. And you can do that by going to Gmail and then managing your account, going to security, and you can scroll down and you'll find this less secure app access and you can turn it on. I've already turned it off, so it's showing on, but you could click here and turn it on. Perfect. And one other thing that you need to do to your Gmail account is to enable IMAP access in Gmail. So to do that, you can go back to your account and choose this little menu here and go to mail. From there, you can go to the settings tab up here or settings widget. Go to see all settings. Then come over here to forwarding and pop IMAP and check this enable IMAP radio button here. From there, you can scroll down and hit save changes. In my case, there's no need because I've already set it. But if you do that, you will now have IMAP enabled and will be able to continue and use Gmail for this procedure. I've also listed a couple debugging commands here. We won't cover those now, but we'll probably look at those in a few minutes. That brings us to the point where we can start to install packages. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a putty window to connect to my Raspberry Pi via SSH. And we'll make this window nice and big so that you can see it. And the first thing we're going to do is a sudo apt get update. That will ensure that all packages on the Raspberry Pi are up to date. Next, we're going to install Dovecot and Fetchmail. So we'll go ahead and issue this command here. 
Next up, we're going to get and install maildrop from source. First, running this wget command you see here. That downloaded maildrop. Next, we're going to move the file name download to the proper maildrop tar file name. And then we can unzip it. And finally, we can untar it. Excellent. Next, we need to install a couple of dependencies that we're going to need to build Mildrop. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll hit Y to continue. And with that, we're ready to configure and build Mildrop. First, we'll change into the Mildrop directory. Then we'll run the configure command. And next, we'll run a make install command. With the make install complete, it's time to do some configuration. So the first thing we're going to do is configure etsy, mail drop rc. And we're going to add one line here, which is going to basically indicate that we should be using mailders. So we'll go ahead and save this file. And if you wanted to, you could also add additional filtering rules there. We're not going to do that, but you can certainly look at this example that we see here. If you wanted to add extra filtering rules for spam filtering or redirection or what have you. Okay. Next up, we need to make a mailder. So the mailder make command will help us with that. And then we need to configure dovecot. So we'll go ahead and edit the dovecot conf file scroll to the bottom and we're going to include this big block you see here and we can just paste it right in and save the file and exit at this point we can go ahead and restart dovecot and we should be all set great but just to make sure we can check the status of dovecot and we can see that it is indeed active and running so that's a great sign excellent Let's go ahead and configure fetch mail. So to do that, we're going to edit the etsy fetch mail rc file. And we're going to add the below lines that you see here, but we're going to need to adjust the username and password to match your Gmail account. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for my Gmail account. And as much as I'd like to show you the password for this account, I'm going to forego that, but at this point, you would go ahead and put in your password and then exit and save. Welcome back. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're going to do is set some permissions on that file since it does have a password in it that's sensitive. So we can chone it and chmod it. And now that file is more secure. Perfect. Let's also configure fetch mail to run on startup by editing the fetch mail defaults and changing the start daemon equals no to start daemon equals yes and saving the file. Perfect. And next we're going to change the fetch mail user to root because I've had problems with set UID on the Raspberry Pi. So editing the etsy initd fetch mail file, we can change the user from fetch mail to root and then save the file. Great. At this point, we can go ahead and restart fetch mail by doing a daemon reload and a fetch mail restart. And it appears that completed without error, so that's very good. That said, it's very worthwhile to look for errors in your configuration. And what I'm going to do is follow the journal CTL and let's see if we see any sorts of errors. We can see that fetch mail has started up and it is reading messages and it does have a message count. Those are all good signs. So I would say that things are looking pretty good. Now, if you see authentication errors or IO errors, then you may have a problem to solution. If you do, leave a note in the comments below. I'll certainly help you out as much as I can. So with fetch mail, mail drop, and dovecot configured, we are ready to receive incoming mail. 
Let's go ahead and launch a mail client. I'm going to use Thunderbird so that we can test. So once launched here, I'm in the account settings tab. I'm going to say account actions and add mail account. And for the name, I'll just say pi. For the email address, it'll be pi at chatpy. And we can put in a password. And then from there, we can click configure manually. And I'm just going to go ahead and click advanced config because the tests here are probably going to fail. And this will say, okay, we're gonna take your current settings and create an account. So, okay. From here, I can tweak the server name to be chatpy, the username to be pi. Connection security to be none, authentication method to be password transmitted and securely. And then from there, we should have all of our other settings set. So all we need to do is go back to our local folders tab and we should have a Pi account. So let's click get messages. It'll probably ask us for our password again. We can put that in, use password manager to remember this password. If you'd like, this is going to be the password for the Pi account on the Pi. So we'll say okay. And what do you know? All of the emails that were in my rtchris79 account are now here. So we can say that this was indeed a success. With incoming email all configured, we're now ready to configure outgoing email. So let's go ahead and minimize this Mozilla session here. We'll come back to it. And I'm going to launch a, a new putty session since I closed my old one. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and log in. And now we're ready to proceed. Now, before we get started, I'll also note that much like with the previous procedure that we covered, it is important to ensure that two-factor authentication is not set up on your Gmail account. All right. So first, let's go ahead and install some modules. And with this post fix configuration option, we're going to choose internet site. And we will leave the system mail name as the default for your Raspberry Pi name, in my case, ChatPi. And with that complete, we now get to create a SASL password. And you're going to want to add the line that you see here with no white space in front of it. So I'll go ahead and paste that in and we'll get rid of the white space. You're going to use your username and your password. And once again, as much as I like you guys, I'm going to go ahead and put this in and save the file. I suggest you do the same, but at this point, I'm going to cut away for a minute. Once again, welcome back. Okay, let's take some measures to protect that password by running these three lines that you see here. Great. Next, let's create a postfix config file. I'll go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. And the first thing we're going to want to do is to grab a copy of it. And then from there, we can edit the file. And we want to look for relay host equals. As we scroll down here, we will see it. There it is. And we want that to be changed to what you see here. Great, let me get rid of that space, just in case. And the other thing we need to do is add our network to the end of the list of networks so that we can log in and send messages without any sort of complication. So in my case, on the end of my networks, I'm going to add the following. 192.168.1.1.1. And that will account for my network, which is 192.168.1 based. Perfect. We also need to add some SASL settings. So let's go ahead and scroll to the bottom of the file. And we're going to copy the lines you see here. And we do want to make sure there are no white spaces in front of these lines. So let's remove those. And with that complete, we can go ahead and save the file and exit. Then we can run this new aliases command. And after that, we're ready to restart postfix. 
That's it. So the next thing we get to do is just go ahead and configure that mail client. I'll go ahead and launch Thunderbird over to the account settings tab. Under outgoing server, we should have a chat pie entry that got created before. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to remove the dot from chat pie. The port needs to be port 25, no connection security, password transmitted insecurely, and a username. From there, we can hit OK, and then let's try and send a message. So back to the inbox, I'm going to write a message to rtchris79 at gmail.com with a subject of test and a body of test and hit send. And the message is sent. And there it is. Now in your case, it may not come back right away because there may be a transmit delay with respect to how quickly fetch mail is running, but there you see it. Thank you, Virtual Chris. Appreciate you taking us through that. So that's the procedure. Hopefully you can give it a try and get set up with your Gmail account or some other similar account. In any event, I do have this set up on my Netscape Communicator client right here. And in a future video, we'll go through that setup process and explore a little bit, as well as perhaps looking at some other MS-DOS clients or other early Windows 3.1 clients that are available. In any event, hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely subscribe to the channel so that you will be notified when that video and others become available. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If not, you know what to do. And with that, I think that's pretty much what we're going to cover today. And actually, as I look at my incoming email here, it's actually time for dinner. So with that, I'm going to sign off. We'll see you next time. Bye now.